to my channel annoyingly i tried to film this a moment ago and for some reason uh, you couldn't see my face at all i don't know what went wrong here i was considering posting it anyway but again it might have annoyed some people if you can see my face hopefully if by the way if this one doesn't film properly i'm just going to put it up anyway because i'm not filming away again i can't be asked so we'll just have to hope that you see my face in this one <laughs> So I wanted to carry on uh, from last time talking about my A to Z of things that I don't like. So um, I got up to um, rough seas. So S is for spontaneity. I don't like spontaneity. I like everything to be planned. S is also for small talk. I don't like small talk. I prefer deep talk. I like to know everything about a person, all the details of their life. Um, like collecting facts. Probably a good job for me if I could work would be a journalist actually. Because journalists collect all the facts in a situation. They go deep, don't they? Um, I don't like skirting around the edges of an issue. Um, but all, for, for, you know, I guess small talk is often talked about as like lubricating the wheels. Like kind of um, a way in, if you like, before you go in deep. Um, it's like, some people describe it as social grooming. Like you get like a way in, like if you don't know someone very well, you do your small talk, you don't go straight into the deep. Whereas for me, I don't see a point in that. It's like you are, I either want to know you 100% or I can't be bothered, you know. It's like, yeah, it doesn't go down well with some people because some people think it's a bit rude if you don't do small talk. Um, I do realise that you are supposed to do it, it's polite, but. Yeah, it's a difficult one. It's like you either risk not doing it and people think you're rude or you do something that ultimately you don't see the point in. And that's completely unnatural and just use up a lot of spoons. That's to say a lot of energy. Spoons represent energy. Check out Spoon Theory if you don't know it already. It's a good way of describing energy loss and disabilities. In autism, small talk can use up energy, use up spoons. So, um, yeah, sometimes you just have to kind of um, pick your battles and like, okay, you might offend some people, but life's too short and obviously people who are really worth knowing won't be offended um it can obviously it can make it hard because small talk is the first step in getting to know someone often um so it can sometimes mean that you ultimately find it harder to make friends because often small talk is the first way in obviously now with the internet that's maybe a little bit easier because the internet doesn't require the whole small talk thing you can go in deep straight away which is quite good so sometimes the internet's quite a good space to find friends if you find small, small talk difficult um yeah, I don't like small talk. T is thunder. I don't like thunder. But at the same time, a bit like with rough seas. Although I don't like it, I'm strangely drawn to it. I like looking at pictures of thunderstorms. Um, but I don't like being in them. I find them scary and sinister. A bit like a dog, I can kind of know when uh, when it's about to thunder. Because there's a sort of a sulfurous scent in the air, isn't there? Um where you can sort of detect that it might thunder and I'm pretty good at knowing when it's likely to thunder because I spend a, I do spend a lot of time observing clouds and I guess if you have a phobia you can become quite good at noticing patterns of a thing that you're scared of so I kind of detect the likelihood that there could be a thunderstorm even if it's quite a long way off because um, I get a kind of sense that there's going to be one at some point um, yeah, thunderstorms, I don't like them. But if I'm inside, it's, it's okay. But they're still scary. But when it's summertime and it's very hot and oppressive... Oh, yeah, I didn't mention, did I? Summer. I don't like summer. That also came under S. I don't like summer because it's hot and oppressive. Yeah, um, another way in which I'm unconventional because for most people love summer, but I don't. Um, but, yeah, in summer when it is hot and oppressive, um, sometimes I need a thunderstorm to clear the air. So, again, obviously... It's not, you know, I I need there needs to be one. So again, I want there to be one. I just don't want to be in it. <laughs> but I do like the rain. I like the rain. I like walking in the rain. But it's very elemental, just as long as it's not thundering. Uncertainty. I don't like uncertainty. I don't like uncertain change. That's connected to spontaneity as well. I don't like spontaneity. I don't like uncertainty. Um, and V. I don't like vans. Because they always signify potential for construction work and noise and things I don't like. And they take up a lot of space in the pavement. One exception might be the post van. Because that's usually, you know, the post van is more likely to come with gifts. <laughs> but um, I don't like vans generally. X is for xenophobia. What's the point? I don't see the point. 
in xenophobia, that's connected to the issue I have with jingoism, the issue I have with nationalism, the issue I have with war. It's like, grow up people, seriously, get a grip and just get along, for God's sake, what's the problem? It doesn't matter where someone's from, we're all human. And if, if someone's nice, I'm nice. You know, it's as simple as that. Xenophobia just does not, I don't get it. Why? Um, yeah, why is for yuppies, um, if you think 1980s, yuppies were, were sort of a product of Thatcherism, they went out into the city to make a lot of money and, yeah, I don't like yuppies. <laughs> so silly with fat chicks. And, uh, and Z is uh, zips on clothes. I don't like zips, even though I've got a zip on here. This is a very old jumper, 18 years old, whereabouts. I only wear it inside and it's too big for me, but it's comfortable. Um, I have a lot of clothes, by the way, that are very, very old because I don't throw anything out. I only throw things out if they're literally broken. Um, a lot of my clothes, particularly the ones I wear inside, are about ancient. But it just goes to show that you can have things that last a long time. If you look after them properly, they won't break. Um, and I know I've got enough clothes. I, I don't actually need to buy... I say I've got enough clothes now, I don't need to buy any new clothes. At all. Probably for the rest of my life. Well, I mean, I might get a new coat now and again, but... You know, really, I don't actually need any new clothes, so I think cool in that respect. Um, but yeah, I don't, going off on a tangent, but I don't like, um, I did have a little bit of a phase when I got a little bit obsessed with clothes, and I've got quite a few. And now, I'm, I've over, I've, now I'm no longer obsessed, so I'm obsessed more with mugs now. <laughs> My obsession is move on. But yeah, um, I don't like zips, because um, they're annoying, and also hair often gets caught in them. Okay, so I'm going to finish this video now. Um, Oh yeah, thank you for your comments. One comment in particular that I enjoyed reading, I read all your comments, but one is about was about emotions and how they could relate to not liking emotions, but at the same time being quite an emotional person. I would say that in general, I'm not a particularly emotional person, but there are exceptions where I get carried away. And I think my unemotionality is actually a defense strategy against emotions because emotions can be quite overwhelming even positive emotions but sometimes nevertheless I do get carried away mainly on a sensual level because I can be quite drawn to beautiful objects that kind of give me a sense of ecstasy almost and that can sometimes be rather overwhelming because I like perfection I like things to be perfect but but, I, but the irony is is that when something is perfect it still doesn't feel right which is ironic because surely if some surely if something's perfect because they're doing a like perfection Surely it would feel alright if something is perfect, but it never is enough. If something is perfect, it can feel almost like too overwhelming, which is weird because I want things to be perfect. But when it's like you can't win, isn't it? But when things are perfect, it can still make me feel very overwhelmed because it's too beautiful to look at. It's like too beautiful. It's a bit like when you're dazzled by what you can see, um, and that can sometimes be. A bit like being on drugs, but I've never taken drugs. Uh, but I, it's what I can imagine, say, a sense of high that some people describe, obviously not as extreme. Um, but yeah, it can be rather overwhelming. So I can, like, like being a child in a sweet shop, but yeah, similar but more intense. And wanting to jump up and down and things like that. Uh, because it's too beautiful and uh, too, it's too beautiful, yeah. Um, so that can be overwhelming. So thank you for sharing that, because I can't relate. Okay, so um, I'm going to finish this video now, uh, get it uploaded, and I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. So thank you for watching.